right, everybody. Uh, so, are you guys ready to go back to the future of urban rail signaling? Well, today we are in the experience theater, so I want you to experience. Therefore, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. The first one, what do you think the following have in common? Platform screen doors installed in an entire metro station, a metro car, and this car. So it's not the toy, okay? It's a Porsche 918 Spider. So you have to tell me what you think they have in common. So let me maybe help you with one picture. So no, I can people here in the crowd saying it's me with curly hair and, uh, and a moustache trying to go back to the future. That's not it. Any idea? Cost. So indeed, what they have in common is their cost. They cost more or less 1 million euro. And if you're a, a pu public transport operator and you're trying to increase the throughput of your network, that money could be in your pocket. So let me now go to the second question I have for you. The second question I have for you is for you to tell me what do you think this operator, which is Muni operator, the one, one of the one operating in, uh, in San Francisco, have as a problem from an operational standpoint when they need to increase passenger throughput? Any idea? No? So, basically the issue they have is that area, which is a tunnel, and when they try to increase passenger throughput, they need to put many, many trains into that same tunnel. So, those guys, basically, they have two options. One is to dig another tunnel, and that will be very good news for Elon Musk and his boring company, or they could actually find a way to put more train, inject more train in that specific tunnel. So now I ask you a question, and now you could ask me a question, why are you asking those questions? So basically, here, I, I, I mentioned challenges, which is about increasing passenger throughput, and CBTC is the solution, actually, to address that challenge that those operators have. So if I go back to the, uh, the previous 1 million euro question, uh, public transport operators, when they are facing with passenger increase and passenger throughput, their main first idea will be, okay, let me extend the length of my train. But that will have a cost, obviously. You will need to buy uh, ex extra cars. You will need to uh, extend the platforms. You will need potentially to buy new platform screen doors. And all that money will just pile up. It will have, uh, obviously, an operational impact, but also a maintenance impact, because you will need to maintain those, ex those extra, extra equipment. Instead of that, you could actually go with CBTC, decrease the headway, the, uh, the difference in between train, and then you can carry more passengers, and that will be econo economically more, uh, more, um, more efficient, I would say. So now if I go back to my bottleneck question. So here, as I mentioned, the issue is to inject more train. So Muni was actually about to dig another tunnel and get other lines actually passing by the bay through a different way, and then increase the throughput. They were actually very close to, to get there until they discovered that CBTC could do the job. Because in that specific area, with CBTC, they can run as low as 60 seconds headway in between trains. So through that, they actually managed to save billions of dollars uh, and, and, and put that somewhere else instead. So, but I've been always talking, only talking about passenger, uh, passenger throughput, but it's not the that's not the, the, only, the only thing that CBTC can do for you. There are more things that they can do. The first one is that uh, CBTC can run bidirectional, which means from an operational standpoint that you can actually um, manage the incidents quicker because you can get the train moving back and, track, back and forth on the same track, and then you can actually avoid, a, avoid an incident. Another, another benefit of CBTC is that it can run with no secondary de train detection. And that's actually by design. It's actually mentioned in the IEEE that to run CBTC, you don't need secondary train detection. Uh, so now, there is one uh, anecdote that I'd like to share with you. Um, a politician in, uh, in North America, a uh, few, uh, few, uh, few months back, indicated that CBTC was an old technology from the 80s. So we got several people in the industry saying, oh, that's not true. Well, guess what? It's true. CBTC has been implemented first in 1985, so mid-80s. So yes, it is, uh, I would say, an old technology. However, it's a technology that has evolved a lot. 
so for example, do you know that now CBTC is using big data for predictive maintenance? CBTC now is cyber secured so that there is no issue to our critical infrastructure. Tomorrow, CBTC will use artificial intelligence so that we'll see autonomous metro into our cities coming. So all those things are just making it even more, uh, more attractive. So for me, CBTC is actually a cool vintage technology, right? Uh, Walter Kinio, my colleague here, presented this morning that artificial intelligence and autonomous train were actually coming and on the, on the verge of coming in the, uh, in, the, in, the next, uh, in the next few years. So if I go back to my original question, which was, are you guys ready for the future of urban railway sig railway signaling? So here is the picture from the from the movie, and if you uh, if you recall, the inventor of this uh, nice car, the DeLorean, was uh, was called Doc, and Doc was always struggling in each and every of his movie to find energy to actually power his uh, his time machine. What I personally like about CBTC is that you can do all that, you can increase the passenger throughput, you can uh, go manage your incidents efficiently, save money, and at the same time, you can run it with sustainable energy. Thank you very much.